optionally using one of the CCP modules here, we have seen that we have two CCP modules as on our uh, as on other microcontrollers. So one of the CCP modules can be used for power factor correction for power sensitive applications. So this plot shows here a power factor correction. We can use a, use one of the CCP module or capture, compare, and feed up the modules and control the power factor. Moving on to the next slide, we will see what is what is the sensorless control of a brushless DC motor and what are the advantages and how we can implement using PIC 18FXX31. Sensorless control of brushless DC motor gives many advantages. Most importantly, lower system costs. Every phase develops a voltage called back EMF that opposes the power applied to the phase. During the non-energized phase of the sequence that we have seen earlier, this back EMF crosses from positive voltage to negative voltage or vice versa. From, the, from this zero crossover point, rotor position can be determined and used for commutation. This method eliminates the requirement for sensors for commutation that we have seen earlier. A uh, hall sensor can be eliminated with sensorless, uh, sensorless control of special DC motors. This increases the reliability of control, but it requires some additional hardware on the drive side and additional firmware overhead on the microcontroller side. If you see this block diagram, most of the hardware, uh, hardware uh, blocks remain same. The PWM remains same. The current sensing and over current uh, uh, fault detection remains same. Motor current measurement which is connected to ADC channels remains same and temperature sensor optionally uh, which you can connect to one of the ADC channels remains same. Only the difference is adding a block to detect back MF zero crossing. The back MF zero cross detection can be done in different ways. Following slide shows a couple of methods that can be implemented to uh, to achieve back MF zero cross detection. Let us see what are those uh, methods. Today we will discuss three different methods to determine back MF zero cross point. First one is comparing the back MF signals with respect to half of the DC bus, as shown here. Every sequence has two windings connected across the power supply and third winding left open. This we have seen in uh, in earlier sections. The back MF generated in the non-energized winding is compared with respect to the half of the DC bus. This gives a fairly good result when the motor terminal voltage is approximately equal to the DC bus voltage. So using a comparator, the back MF signal is compared with half of the DC bus and the uh, back MF signal here seen is converted as a square wave and based on the transition of each of these uh, back MF signals we can determine the se uh, switching sequence. If the DC bus voltage is disproportionately high in this case the crossover point may drift away so this is, an, this, this is a disadvantage with this method making it difficult to determine a workable commutation sequence at all speeds. So what is the solution? We will, move, we will see the second method which gives a fairly good result compared to, compared to the first method. So in this method we will compare, compare the back EMF signal with respect to a virtual neutral. We will generate a virtual neutral using three register networks as seen here. So this point will act like a virtual neutral for uh, for this circuit and uh, and this is compared with back EMF signals using a comparator and this gives a square wave and combination of three different uh, three inputs here we can determine the commutation sequence. This has the advantage. This makes it comparatively easy to determine the zero cross point at all measurable speeds. And third method is using high speed ADC that we have on PIC 18FX631 devices. The back MF signals are attenuated and read directly using on chip high speed ADC ADCs that, that are available on PIC 18FX631 devices. This gives a great flexibility in determining the zero crossover point. The firmware should read the 
back EMF signals continuously and compare with the digital values corresponding to the zero cross point. Also, digital filters can be added to filter out the spurious signals that may come due to high frequency switching. So this gives uh, great flexibility in determining the back EMF and zero crossover point because the control lies with the firmware. However, there, are, there is a disadvantage with the back EMF sensing itself. That is, at low speeds, the back EMF developed is very low in amplitude, which makes it difficult to determine a speed cross, uh, a zero crossover point. In this condition, motor is started in open loop, and when sufficient back EMF is built, the control is shifted to closed loop, closed loop control. This concludes the presentation and today we have, just to summarize today's presentation, today we have seen an overview of motor control solutions from microchip and we have seen PIC 18F XX31 uh, peripherals that are useful for, micro control, uh, for motor control application and we have seen an overview of PIC 18F XX31 devices. Also we have seen brushless DC motor control uh, using PIC 18F XX31 in open loop, closed loop with half sensors and with quarter encoder. Also, we have seen different methods of uh, sensorless control and uh, different uh, schemes to uh, determine zero uh, back EMF zero crossover point. Next, I will list a few resources that are available from microchip. We have few app notes on versus DC motor and mo motor control. First one is AN885, which gives few fundamental details of Brussels DC motor and AN899 which explains in detail about Brussels DC motor control using the PIC 18F XS31 devices and the third app note is AN857 which is uh, titled Brussels motor control made easy using uh, using other uh, microcontrollers from microchip. Also we have a demonstration board and development board called PICDEM MC uh, which is a completely isolated board and this can be used uh, with the debug tools, uh, with the debug tools like ICD, MPLAB ICD2 and MPLAB ICE when it is connected, when the board is connected to the power or when the board is live. And also this is a low cost design and this is ideal for, uh, for the designers to start with. All this information is available on our microchip website. So please visit us at www.microchip.com backslash motor. And thank you for listening.